Hi there, I'm Susan from SOAR Learning and StudySkills.com. Today I want to address an email that came in from Beth R. She's a middle school mom who's concerned about her son's organization. She saw some information on our binder system and she brought a question to our attention about her child who might not want to stand out amongst all of his peers. So I'm preparing this video to actually answer uh, Beth's question and also this is something that you can share with your children, with your students, with teachers or administrators, anyone who is impacted by the process of keeping students organized. Now, what, if you're not familiar with our binder system, what we do is we take this traditional method of having a separate folder and notebook for each class, which often means that students have to carry 12 to 16 different folders and notebooks around. We take this and we condense it down to one binder. Now, obviously, this is just more streamlined to begin with, but there's actually a very brain-friendly reason why this works better. So the first thing I'm going to do is show you why the binder is better, according to your brain. And then the second thing we'll do is we'll talk about some alternatives. If you um, are having trouble making this work within your school, or maybe there's a teacher who's got a system and is not really sure that she wants to adjust it, we'll address some alternatives for that. The brain is a collection of neuron wires, billions of them. These neuron wires literally create pathways in our brain for every thought and movement we make. And although we have billions of them in our head, any one of these neuron connections is really just like this circuit here. This string of lights represents the circuits in our brain. The first bulb is our frontal cortex. It receives information, determines what to do with it, and then sends directions to the rest of our brain. But what happens if the circuit is cut? The power goes out. These power outages happen regularly in our brain. They are caused by distractions. Distractions come in all forms. Other people talking to us, such as teachers lecturing, classmates talking while we are trying to listen and take notes, or even when we're just trying to put papers away. Emotions, such as feeling overwhelmed in class or upset over the amount of work we have to do, also can cause distractions. And then there's rushing out of class and on to the next, or even sluggish brain chemicals can cause power outages from illness or chronic situations such as ADHD. These distractions cut the power on the brain circuits. When this happens, signals never reach their destination in the brain and the power goes out. What does this have to do with organizing papers? Our brains do best with fewer connections. Fewer demands on the brain circuit mean less opportunities to be derailed by distractions. Let's look at the traditional method for organizing papers into folders as an example. I will outline every single command on the brain circuit. If we are in class and our teacher passes out homework, we will have to grab the paper, set the paper down, reach down, open the book bag, move books out of the way, flip through the folders, find the right folder, grab the folder, pull it out, set it on the desk, open the folder, slide the paper in, close the folder, pick the folder up, reach down, grab the book bag, open the bag, move books, hold the other folders back, slide the folder in, set the bag down, and return to an upright position for a total of 22 connections on the brain circuit. The source system for organizing papers, however, was developed to promote simplicity. When the teacher hands us a paper in this situation, we grab it, open the binder, flip to the subject folder, slide the paper in the folder, and close the binder for a grand total of only five connections on the brain circuit. Look at this difference. The source system has 77% fewer steps, making it 440% more efficient on our brain energy. So now you've seen some reasons why the binder is so brain friendly. The final thing I'd like to do is just share some alternative points. First, I'd like to talk to students. If you are a student, whether you're in middle school or high school, I encourage you to be a leader within your class because most of your classmates are struggling with the same things, the same challenges of keeping track of assignments, all these different folders and notebooks. It's a big strain, not only uh, because it's a lot to carry, but it is a tremendous amount to keep track of. So be a leader within your class and um, take control of your own organizational process by simplifying everything for yourself. Now the other thing is, you can keep it subtle. You don't have to keep our cover sheet in your binder. You can even purchase a smaller binder. I've got a one inch binder here. And if you follow our tips in our system, you actually can make it all work with a one inch binder. So this again, will just keep everything very subtle. You don't have to stand out and make a big statement with this. And finally, if you have a reluctant teacher that maybe has their own system and isn't really willing or interested in compromising uh, with the SOAR binder, then go ahead and follow whatever it is that teacher is asking you to do. You can still get all the rest of your folders and notebooks condensed down and you still are going to be making a significant improvement by getting 80% of your materials reduced down to this one binder. 
Now, for teachers who have their own system for organizing things, this is something I run into a lot. I've done in-services across the country, and often I'll run into particularly science teachers, seem to be the most common, where they like to have one separate binder for their class. Usually they'll have some different tabs inside, organizing labs, uh, vocabulary terms, different assignments. If that's something that you can relate to in some form, the idea here is to minimize the transitions for students as they're going back and forth between classes and, and um, home from school. So in that situation, what you can do is keep the, your binder within the classroom and allow students to keep all of their materials organized there. And anything that needs to go home, that needs their attention at home, they can take out of their binder in, in, in class and put it in their SOAR binder. When you have everything condensed down to one binder, you'll actually be surprised at how much more easy it will be for the students to get all that information back to you in the class and keep it all together. All right, if you have any further questions or are interested in learning about how the binder system works in general, visit our website at studyskills.com. Thank you.